Yo, what's up, everybody? Um, so we've all heard the news about Travis, um, about Travis Hunter, and you know, I was thinking, uh, since he plays two positions, right? Um, I thought I would make, uh, so I'm going to make it just a two part series, I guess. So it's just something to just a little, you know, have some fun with this. You know, he's, he's in the transfer portal, we know. Um, so apparently there's been some speculation that he may not. Well, there was a video. He said um, he's not too sure where he's going to go. So Colorado is not uh, a definite uh, destination for him. So I was like, you know what? Let me. I, I've been thinking, like, maybe there's some – Maybe there's some other schools he can go to, you know. So I was just thinking about it, you know, just having some fun with the with the whole thing, you know what I mean? Um, I think people look at the transfer portal sometimes and think it's like, uh, like, oh, it's a it's a death thing. Not necessarily, you know. I mean, like, I mean, it it is true, you know. You may end up stuck in the portal and you never get out of it. I guess I don't. I guess that's how that works. Well, you know, they may not the schools you may think you're looking to transfer to, you know, they may not have uh you know, things may not go as planned. Uh so anyway, so I, so basically today what I'm gonna do, uh this side is gonna be a two parter. So this is gonna be the five schools uh Travis Hunter could go to as a cornerback now i want to make i want to make that very specific i want to make that point very clear these are five schools that i think he could go to to maximize his potential as a cornerback because we know he plays both sides of the ball so i have i came up with five schools uh so i'm gonna go there's no particular order or prestige or anything like that i just thought of these five schools so number one is Alabama. And you're thinking, oh, Alabama, you know, they're so loaded with talent. I'm like, yeah, if he's if he's really that good, you know, he, he was playing with Deion, and Deion Sanders always talked about don't be scared of competition, right? So going to Alabama, he'll he'll definitely have to compete to start. Uh, you know, he'll be coming in as a true uh, a true sophomore, you know, because they'll let him play immediately. And, you know, there's just, uh, you know, I'm going to break down why, you know. They always send players to the league. That's a given. Anybody that played uh, at Alabama, it's, all, it's almost a given that they're going to get into the league. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, he can play, you know, he can get his, uh, you know, his name in the record books. Awesome guys like uh, D. Milliner, you know Kareem Jackson, freaking J- Dre, Kirkpatrick, uh, Patrick Sertan the uh, second, Marlon Humphrey, and these are all current guys. So, you know, I went through the you know the art guys, I guess, <laughs> and like they, this is this, like these guys right here. This is all in like the last what I, I want to say like what last six seven years. Uh, you just imagine just going back through the history of Alabama, the, the amount of guys they've had at corner, you know, break into the league, uh, you know, so he can go, he can end up in the league behind some of these guys right here, you know, so, especially like Marlon Humphrey and, uh, you know, Jay Kirkpatrick, you know, they're playing, they're always on like playoff teams and hey, he was, Kirkpatrick was on the Super Bowl team last year. So, I mean, that's, that's a good, that's a good company to be in, you know. Uh, you know, he can be part of a national championship team, uh, you know, for three, three, the next three years, he can be competing for national championship, you know what I mean? And, um, he'll also get to play for Nick Saban, you know, um, people, you know, you say what you will about, you know, coach Saban, but, you know, I mean, he is historic. I mean, he has the most. I think he has the most national championships in in college football history. I mean, and he's not done. I mean, I don't know if this will be his last year. I believe 
if it ain't this year, if he's not going to retire this year, I think he'll definitely retire next year or the year after. Um, so, I mean, even if he retires soon, I mean, just to put that on your, your resume, you played for Deion Sanders, one of the greatest corners ever, and you played for Nick Saban, the greatest coach ever in history. Um, and then number two, I got Florida State for obvious reasons. You know, Deion Sanders, his former coach, uh, went there. Like I said, he's one of the, you know, greatest corners, probably the, the greatest player in Florida State history, depending on who you ask. Uh, you know what I mean? He could put his name in the record books, put him, his name in history, and he can end up, you know, if he's really – that guy, you know, he could end up being one of the, the greatest, you know, corners in Florida State history. Or if not, you know, second behind, you know, Deion Sanders. Um, and it's not just him, you know, they had some other guys. Uh, Lee Ward Butler, Packers great. Uh, Anto- Antonio Cromartie, Myron Roll. Uh, J- Jalen Ramsey still playing at a high level right now for the Rams. Got himself a Super Bowl last year. So, I mean, there's some... You know, some of these, you know, these names, I mean, somewhere down the line, like these could be historic names. He's included in, you know, if he ends up at Florida State. Um, and also just, you know, he can put that on his legacy, man. You know, restore Florida State to national prominence again. You know what I mean? It's been, I know people are going to bring up, you know, oh, well, they had a team, you know, like a few years back, I mean, yeah, that was with you know Jameis Winston and uh, and um, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't remember his name. The receiver, um, uh, uh, Kel- Kelvin Benjamin, you know, and them boys, uh, you know, that was one of the all-time probably greatest Florida State teams ever. But I mean, before that, it wasn't you know they were okay. I mean, Bobby Bowden, that was at the tail end. You know, before, uh, you know, before Jimbo Fish, you know, that was like the tail end of uh, Bobby Bowden's career when they actually were prominent. You know, they had, then they had a lull. You, had, you know, Jameis came in. You know, they had their thing for a few years, and then they've been kind of, you know, just kind of obscure now in, in the ACC for a while. Um, three uh, would be Colorado. Okay, so – Obviously, he'll get to play for his former coach. Uh, he can become a legend because there's not too many uh, super legendary players. I mean, obviously, you have the um, – what's his name? Uh, the Heisman Trophy winner. I don't – I, I want to – let me get his name right. Uh, Colorado Heisman winner. Rashawn, which Rashawn Salam. So you know, you never know. Uh, not too many defensive guys win the Heisman, but hey, man, you know, you never know. He balls out. Um, you know, things go his way. He has an incredible, you know, year or two. You know, you never know. Get his name on the radar for a Heisman. Hey, he could be the second in school history. Uh, he definitely would be probably the greatest. Um, you know, Colorado cornerback they've ever had. I mean, they, they do that some legend, you know, Deion Figures, Chris Hudson, Mark Haynes. Uh, boy, I'm messing that. Chi, I can't read it. She, she do. Oh boy, I can't read my own hat right. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> she do a woozy. Uh, yeah, there you go. So right now he's, uh, he's also a bingo too, you know, so he's doing his thing out there. Um, also going there would actually really cement his legacy. If he's able to, you know, be in, be a contender in, um, you know, because of the uh, conference realignment, you know, in a year or two, 
Yeah, they won't have to worry about USC and UCLA, even though I don't think UCLA and USC are necessarily juggernauts, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it would be a little bit, I guess, manageable, I guess. You wouldn't have to worry about, you know, the I guess, like, conference pedigree, I guess, because at that point, in a couple of years, you know, when them two schools leave, um, um, you know, they'll, de- they'll definitely be a contender. Hey, they might get, be a contender this year, but definitely going down the road, you know, you know, for the next three years, you know, definitely once you, once you get them two out of the way, you have basically Oregon, what else? Oregon, maybe Washington at that point, maybe, uh, Utah, definitely. I mean, Utah will be a tough out. But I mean, definitely, they will definitely be a contender uh, in the Pac-12 uh, going forward. Uh, four, I got Notre Dame. Uh, one, Notre Dame is my favorite college football school. Um, they always have clean uniforms. They always have some kind of special uniform every year. Uh, not, not to say these. Well, Alabama's kind of like uh, kind of generic. Florida State has some. You know, they have a couple good ones. Uh, Colorado definitely going to get some drip this year, I'm telling you. They're going to get some some nice, clean drip, you know what I mean? Uh, but, yeah, Notre Dame always comes in with the – they they may have some fresh units. You can't deny it, especially when they have the, the Shamrock Classic. That's always a nice uniform they always have for that. Um, they also have a uh, – he'll be behind a defensive-minded coach and Coach Freeman, you know what I mean? Uh, that'll definitely help, you know, help him, you know, uh, mature and, you know, he'll, he'll be able to grow and learn as a better defensive player. Uh, it's a historic program, uh, plenty of exposure. Uh, the thing about Notre Dame, because Notre Dame is still independent in football, they have like a really weird wonky schedule, but they have a lot of good, they have a lot of robberies. And they play a lot of different teams in pretty much three out of the five conferences. So they well two two of the two of the power five. So they they play USC every year. That's a rivalry. That's a Pac-12 team. They play so I'll play Stanford. I forgot about Stanford. Um, and then in the ACC, they they, they play uh, Boston College. They play Clemson, uh, Florida State. Sometimes, uh, who else did they play? Um, uh, Virginia, I believe, and um, and, and they've scheduled Miami for so that those are a lot of the, the uh, like, uh, especially Clemson and Miami, even though Miami's down and Clemson's not kind of down. Now, that's still, those are still big time games, especially if you go down to their place and play and, and ball out, you know, that'll really, you know, that'll really put you on the map. Um, what else? I, th- I think that's it. Th- that's the main two conferences he'll be playing against. Is he'll be lucky to because he'll have to, he'll be basically playing exposure from two power five conferences every single every single year. You know what I mean? Um, and you know he can also throw his name into the greats of uh, you know Notre Dame history. Uh, with, with guys like Todd Todd Light and Julian Love, Bobby Taylor, Shane Walton, you know them guys too, all you know historic guys for the program. And then last, uh, I picked Texas. Uh, you already know football is God in Texas, uh, especially uh, in uh, off Texas, Austin, Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas, so everything gets magnified. He'll be playing on his own, um, his own um, major network, the Longhorn Network. That's another thing. At Notre Dame, Notre Dame has uh, the, the the sponsorship deal with uh, or the TV deal with Peacock, which is NBC. That's a big that's a big time, you know, uh, company to be with. Um, uh, it's another historic program. You know, goes back decades um and he'll also really get to eat you know what i'm saying in terms of like past coverage because um 
they do have they have some really good running backs in the Big Twelve. I'm not gonna lie, but it's still a very it's still known as a very pass happy, you know, league or conference. I guess if you want to call it, uh, especially going up against like Oklahoma State. Um, who else is real pass heavy? TCU can throw that thing. Uh, Tech, Texas Tech. Uh, then you got Kansas. You know, Kansas can get up there too. They're not really uh, super pass happy, but they're before that quarterback got hurt, they're very explosive offensively. That's just to name a few. Baylor too can throw that thing. It's a very pass happy offense. You know, they're not known for super great defenses, but you know, he goes there. You know, things could change. Um, And this is another, this is probably the, the biggest, I think the biggest selling point. Because Texas and Oklahoma are leaving for the SEC, uh, I think, was it, was it 2024, I believe? Um, he has the possibility of staying at one school and winning a conference title in two different conferences. You know, if he if he can do some stuff and turn him and make him a perennial contender next year or even in the junior season before they leave and they win the big 10 a big 12 title and you know they they switch flip conferences and they're able to you know pull some miracle out and like win the sec could you imagine that oh, he he'll be in the history he'll be in the history book part as the greatest you know cornerback in probably college football history if he's able to win a conference title in the Big 12 and then switch over and then win a conference title in the SEC in basically their first year in the conference. You understand the magnitude of what that would do? Like Texas would be like an all-time like great dynasty for that run if that ever happened. Uh I mean it'd be a big challenge, you know. Once you go to the SEC, you know, you got Georgia, uh you got Alabama, you got Florida will get will be back, you got a and M, I think they'll get back. Um, who else? Uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, Vandy. You know they can sneak up on you sometimes. Uh, who else is in the SEC? Uh, Missouri has always been. They haven't been much since they've joined. But they I mean they have a lot of they have a lot of good. T- Arkansas, I forgot about Arkansas. LSU, LSU will be back next year. So definitely, you know they were. I mean, they got smacked in that conference title game. I mean, in this first year, Brian Kelly did very good. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, and then, like, just to name some of the guys there, Nathan Vasher, Quentin Jammer, Aaron Ross, just to name a few guys. You know, he can put his name in Texas Longhorn legacy history uh, behind them guys, too, at cornerback. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, these are just uh, – just a, just a few. Um, now that I think about it, I, I, honorable mention uh, LSU. You know what I'm saying? They play corner there. Uh, I'm just going down. Somebody they've been saying it was like USC. Yeah, I guess for conference prestige, I guess uh, the well, not just that, but like program prestige. I can see USC. Um, maybe Ohio State. I could definitely see him at Ohio State at corner. Michigan at corner, um, you know, behind Desmond Howard. Uh, well, Desmond, Desmond was a corner, yeah. He did return punts, too. Um, yeah, man, there's a lot of Miami. Shoot, if you, <laughs> if you really want to go down there, I mean, there's, a, there's a lot of schools. I mean, I, these were just like the, the first five that popped in my head. But, I mean, there's a, a plethora of schools he could really go to. I mean, the, he had to pick of the litter. Um, Clemson, Clemson could be another one. You know, you never know. That'd be a surprise one. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just just this is just something that you know popped in my head today. I was at work and I was like, you know, I wonder what this would be like a little fun video to make. Like, what schools could he go to if he wanted to play? You know, strictly cornerback. Man. Uh, so yeah, those are my top five. Uh, Alabama, Florida State, 
Colorado, Notre Dame, and Texas. Yeah, so those are my five. Uh, let me know down in the comments uh, if you have any other places you will you would think he would excel at at cornerback. Uh, like I said, I threw out some other ones like USC, LSU, uh, Miami, Clemson. You know, just to throw some names out there. But if you think there's some, if there's another school you'd like that uh, you think he can go to, uh, you know, yeah, let me know. Uh, just keep the just keep the conversation going. All right. Well, I am done with that. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.